2017 marks the 10th anniversary of Anime Milwaukee. Anime Milwaukee is the largest anime convention in Wisconsin, expected to welcome over 10,000 attendees in 2017. Anime Milwaukee had a lot to prove for their 10th anniversary of this year, especially when their previous year was plagued with issues. Does Anime Milwaukee hit hard for their 10-year anniversary? Anime Milwaukee was held once again at the Hyatt Regency Milwaukee and the Wisconsin Center next door, both connected by a skywalk. Like its previous year, the Hyatt and the Convention Center both held this con perfectly, but there are notable changes with the location this year. The biggest and most notable change is that the convention has now expanded into the third floor of the Wisconsin Center. This is where the dealer's hall as well as registration was located. Another change is that the main events room is now located where the dealer's room was last year, and the video game room has moved from the Hyatt into the Wisconsin Center. I really love this new layout. For the most part, this expansion greatly reduced the amount of crowding, which I felt was an issue last year. There are plenty of food options around this area, including a mall with a food court accessible through the skywalk, as well as all the food stands on the first floor of the Wisconsin Center. As other reviewers have said before me, parking near the high can get expensive even after discounts. Be sure to read up about the parking rates and bring extra money for parking before heading to this convention. Registration at Anime Milwaukee went very well in its new location. I felt that the registration looked a lot more refined compared to last year. It was far less crowded and my friends got their badges at the door very easily. Like last year, you had the option to have your badge mailed to you, which is convenient to those who pre-registered. Though I did hear from others that the pre-registration line went very slow on Thursday evening. I even noticed during some points on Friday that the AtCon registration was far shorter than the pre-registration. Regardless, the registration was a huge step up from last year and was much more organized in 2017. Making its return to Anime Milwaukee this year was their VIP badge. This badge was worth the high price tag if you are going to this con primarily for the guests, as you had the ability to skip the long lines and get priority seating for all the panels. Another improvement from last year was their mobile schedule. Last year, Anime Milwaukee utilized the Conf Plus app, but it didn't work as efficiently for several people. This year, the mobile schedule is on their website, which worked much better than what Conf Plus did on your mobile device. The only small complaint I had with the mobile schedule was that it only worked as good as your internet connection. It would be nice to have an app where the schedule is viewable offline. What hasn't improved from last year, however, was the scheduling. Once again, the guidebooks did not have the locations and times for all the panels, but had them on a separate pamphlet. The final schedule wasn't released until the week of the convention, so it probably didn't make the guidebooks in time when they got printed. But for other mid-sized cons I've attended, they released their schedule weeks before the con. I really hope for next year they can put together the final schedule as early as possible so that it could make it into the guidebooks in a timely manner. But it only gets worse from here. The scheduling at Anime Milwaukee had time changes across the board this year, from the panels, to the autograph sessions, and even some of the press interviews I attended. This resulted in a lot of confusion for several people I spoke with. I felt that the scheduling was the biggest flaw Anime Milwaukee had this year, and is one area Amki needs to step their game up as they grow into a large convention. With those big negatives aside, Anime Milwaukee in 2017 was packed with so many things to do. There are plenty of different panels and events that could fill up your entire schedule. Events including the cosplay photo shoots, the masquerade, the burlesque show, cosplay combat chess, cosplay foam fighting, as well as all the guest events. And speaking of guests, Anime Milwaukee made a huge jump with their guest lineup this year for their 10th anniversary. First they brought several different cosplay guests, fashion designer Mint Neko, as well as several comic book and entertainment guests. But the most notable lineup of guests this year were all of the voice actor guests. Anime Milwaukee last year already had an excellent lineup of voice actors, but this year they went far beyond my expectations. They went from 7 voice actor guests from last year to an impressive 15 voice actors. Now 3 of the guests did have to cancel at the last minute due to the weather, but the amount of guests Anime Milwaukee invited was stellar and really set a new standard for this con in the future. What really left a bad taste in my mouth from last year were the autographs. The lines were long, slow, and we were blindsided with unexpected policies. 
this year, I felt that the autograph handling was handled much better this time around, but it did have its fair share of issues. Firstly, I really liked the new autograph policy. Anime Milwaukee finally had a more clear and detailed policy regarding autographs, and I thought that they executed this policy very well for most of the autograph sessions. What was an issue was the crowd controlling and communication with the staff during the larger autograph sessions. Several people told me that the crowding got so intense that they received multiple fire hazard warnings. And there was also poor communication with the staff that the autograph lines got cut, resulting in several people waiting for hours without being informed that they couldn't get an autograph. Now I do stress that most of the big issues that occurred during autographs were due to the scheduling and the flight issues for some of the guests. While it did start rocky on Friday, I still have to give staff credit for putting a lot of effort to get the autographs running as efficiently as possible. Anime Milwaukee completely surprised me with their dealer's hall this year. The dealer's hall was on the third floor of the Wisconsin Center and it looked much more appealing compared to last year's. It actually reminded me a lot of Yomacon's large dealer's hall in so many ways. The dealer's hall and artist alley are all in one area this time around and there was so much to see and so much variety in anime merchandise. I also wanted to give a big shout out to their artist alley. Not only was their artist alley big, but the artwork presented was spectacular. Remember to bring a lot of spending money as there is bound to be something that you will like. Anime Milwaukee once again had an incredible video game room. Its new location in the Wisconsin Center really did add a lot of appeal to this area. Anime Milwaukee's video game room was big and had plenty of things hardcore gamers will enjoy. They had console gaming, PC gaming, arcade gaming, a rock band stage, and even Pachinko Fever. Several of my favorite game room providers including World 9, Tokyo Attack, and several others contributed to this game room and I felt that once again was a huge success. Anime Milwaukee by far had one of the best video game rooms I've seen so far at conventions and really is a place you need to check out. And finally, let's talk about the rave. Last year, Anime Milwaukee was criticized for having such an underwhelming rave. Several issues plagued the rave last year such as the low music, the poor lighting, and the lack of adrenaline. This year, the rave really hit hard and several people told me that it completely made up from its previous year. The music was great and the lighting was excellent, and most importantly, the DJs truly did drop the bass. An excellent rave overall, and the people I spoke with all said they had an amazing night. Before I get to my verdict, I would like to give a big shout out to Nick from Confident Video and Marshall from Red Dawn Fury. For more awesome con coverage as well as cosplay music videos, please check out their channels with a link in the description. Anime Milwaukee in 2017 made a number of improvements over last year and I felt it was a solid 10th year anniversary, but it isn't perfect. Anime Milwaukee still has a lot of room for improvement when they grow to become a large size convention. The first thing I liked about Anime Milwaukee was the third floor expansion. Utilizing the third floor of the Wisconsin Center really helped this con a lot. It refined the registration as well as the dealer's hall and really brought a lot of appeal to the con. I also really love the guest lineup this year. I never imagined Anime Milwaukee inviting 15 voice actors to the convention. Sure, three may have canceled at the last minute, but I still give their guest relations a lot of credit for going big with the amount of guests. I also really love the dealer's hall this year. It was big and had plenty of variety to satisfy all anime fans. Next is the video game room. Anime Milwaukee had a record of hosting incredible video game rooms and it's no different this year. I've also said this in my review of Daishokan, but I really feel that the state of Wisconsin really knows what they are doing to make amazing game rooms. Next is the Saturday Night Rave. I felt the music was awesome and the DJs brought a lot of adrenaline to the crowd. Based on what others have told me, it was an incredible night. I also really liked how the con handled the registration this year. While the pre-registration could have been handled a lot better, the registration overall was a step up from last year's excessively crowded lines. And finally, I like the new autograph policies for this convention. 
Last year, I had a bad experience with the autograph lines and their policies, but after this year, I don't feel that way anymore. The biggest thing I disliked about Anime Milwaukee this year was the scheduling. From the scheduling being released a few days before the con, to the guidebooks not having the locations and times for all the panels, as well as all of the time changes across the board, it was clear that Anime Milwaukee was totally unprepared with their scheduling this year. And the other thing I disliked was the autograph crowding and communication issues. For the larger autograph lines, several people complained about the lack of communication from the staff when the line got cut, and the crowd controlling for those lines got way out of hand at some points. Anime Milwaukee is a mid-sized convention that unfortunately did not hit 10,000 this year, and my recommended travel time to the con is 8 hours or less. With Anime Milwaukee stepping their game up with their guest lineup this year, this is a great con for those who go for the guests alone. I also recommend this con to fans of vendor halls. While this con's dealer's hall doesn't even come close to cons like Asen, it's still a great dealer's hall with so much to look at. Anime Milwaukee hosts one of the best video game rooms I have ever experienced at a con. Without a doubt, this con will appeal to hardcore gamers. And lastly, Anime Milwaukee is a great con for photographers and videographers. The lighting in the Wisconsin Center was on point, and you can get quite a few great shots in this venue alone. Anime Milwaukee in 2017 was an excellent year overall, but it isn't without its flaws. But, with the amount of effort that they put in fixing several of the issues that plagued last year, I'm confident that next year will be even better. If you are looking for one of the biggest anime cons Wisconsin has to offer, then look no further to Anime Milwaukee. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give Anime Milwaukee 2017 an 8 out of 10. An excellent experience. Thank you all for watching my review of Anime Milwaukee 2017. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more con videos. And don't forget to check out my cosplay music video from Anime Milwaukee. So until then, I will see you at the next con. This is Justin, thank you for watching.